Hey there, it's Sam. Configuration plays a big part in a web app. Things like your database connection details, API keys, and etc. are all things that we might want to change at some point in time. So that means we might want to put all this configuration in one place rather than scatter them across our whole app. The benefit of putting everything in one place is that we can easily manage them in the future rather than scanning through thousands of lines of code and change those value individually. Laravel provides us a robust way to manage our configuration. It stores all the configurations inside the config folder in our project root. If you look inside the folder, we can see all sorts of configuration organized in separate files. And each file is really a simple PHP file that returns an array. And within the array is a series of key and value pairs, which represents the configuration. And we can put in any values that we want for this configuration. And it is extremely easy for us to read a value from this configuration array. For example, currently we are inside a database configuration file. Let's try to read the value of the driver key under the MySQL connections here. Just for demonstration, I'm going to go to the terminal and run PHP Artisan Tinker. To read a certain configuration value, Laravel provides us a very convenient helper function called config. And we can use the dot notation to access a certain value of the configuration. So here, our target is the driver key under MySQL connection and it's living inside the database file. So I'm going to run a config function and type in database.connections.mysql.driver. Hit enter and we see MySQL. Isn't that neat? Let's try another one. Let's go to file systems and this time I'll try to read the driver for the local disk. Again, back inside Tinker, I'll call the config function and pass in file systems disk local driver. And we see the string local, which is what we expected. So to break it down, the first element inside the dot notation will always be the config file name, followed by the keys inside the array. And now you might have already noticed Laravel is calling this env function in a lot of places. In short, this env function is a way for us to access environmental variable. And as you can see here, inside the public disk configuration, the env function is accessing the app URL environmental variable. And that is supplied from our .env file in our project root. Again, it is a nice and simple helper function to read the environmental variables. Let's go back to Tinker, and I'll try to read the app URL environmental variable. And the result is the same as our .env file. Let's try another one, app name and I get live post. And that is pretty much it. We put in sensitive information in our .env file and then git ignore this file so that it won't be tracked by git so that we don't push this file to our remote repository, which is often shared with other people. The .env file differs from developers to developers because we don't really want to share our API keys or credentials with other people. And now let's try to create our own config file and see if we can read values from it. I'll create a new config file called live post and inside the file, we need to return an array. I'll insert one dummy configuration key here and I'll call it here and the value of it is hey. And now let's go back to Tinker and see if this works. We'll restart Tinker to load the changes. And now run a config function live post dot hey. And we get hey. I'm showing a trivial example here, but in the real world, you might want to create your own configuration file for things like the API key for a payment gateway or the admin email address where you'll receive all the error report generated by our app in case if something go wrong. All right, key takeaway for this lesson. Config is a handy helper function to access configuration values from the config folder. We use the dot notation to access the configuration. env is a helper function to access environmental variables. And we normally have our environmental variables inside the .env file. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.